Nigerians continue to Night, travel the in city of Lagos points and God as all routes to you on Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. Our federal high we course. break the news. We are one Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news Thank spreads. You. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. Our 24 hour news station. Chibok is fast becoming a household name not only in Nigeria and the, in the continent of Africa, but around the world. Now, you and I know that, um, unfortunately, it has joined names like Boni Yadi, like Burma, and recently Yaya in the suburb of Abuja that have had their own fissure of um, terrorism in the hands of the dreaded Islamic sect Boko Haram. Now, I was speaking with someone earlier today who said each time he looks into the face of his daughter, he cannot but help to imagine seeing her being abducted. And that's the empathy we see across the world. People putting themselves in the shoes of the parents of these abducted girls. You know, the hashtag, bring back our girls. I've seen millions of tweets just a few days after I got on Twitter. And it's been like that all the way. Just this Saturday, uh, Mr. President was in Paris after being summoned by the President of France, Francois Hollande, alongside with Presidents of Chad, Niger, Cameroon, and of course, Benin Republic, talking about how best to tackle terrorism in this part of Africa. And while all of that was going on, of course, Boko Haram was doing what it knows how to do best, killing people at the border town between Nigeria and Cameroon. As a matter of fact, 10 Chinese were abducted yesterday with another unfortunate rocket launch that killed about 29 Nigerians. I missed all of these Nigerians are asking questions that prior to that time, expectations were high that Mr. President was going to visit Chibok, and many were of the opinion that this was going to be a great political statement, not only to the people of Chibok, but to the world that Nigeria is still united. Now, Mr. President, of course, did not go to Chibok. As a matter of fact, the spokesman of Mr. President, Ruben Abati, said there was no such a, a, a visit in Mr. President's itinerary. And that's how I welcome you to Call Digest this Sunday as we begin to talk about Jonathan and Chibok, the visit that never was. I am Nifemi Oguntoye, and I'm joined now by an associate professor and a security expert, Femi. Adebulu. Thank you very much, Femi, for finding time to join us today. Thank you for having me. Now, what is the significance of Mr. President's absence in Chibok after one month of the abduction story? He said yesterday that he's not scared to visit places of terror. He's been to the UN building, he's been to the police headquarters, he was at Yaya, and he even made mention that it's been in Bornu State. But one month after, over 200 girls were kidnapped in Chibok, a southern town in Bonu State, and Mr. President has not been there. What's the significance of that? Well, thank you very much for the question. Actually, we, in so many fora, we have uh, had the opportunity of making one point or the other about uh, the president's attitude toward the whole thing. Um, I'm of the opinion, for instance, that uh, as a president and commander-in-chief, um, I think uh, one thing he should have done, he, even if he's to empathize with the people who are, who are agonizing uh, because of the abduction of their children, just to uh, identify with them. It's not as if uh, visiting Shibok is going to bring the children back, but at least to empathize with them, to make them know that, look, we have a president that cares. We have a mm. president who, who is also touched by, the, by our own feeling and all that. So I think uh, that would have been uh, wonderful if he had done that. But unfortunately, he did not. I want to, to a large extent, blame that on his advisors. Because uh, I expect his advisors, um, all the advisors, not only the security advisor, to, uh, to at least tell the president that it, it is very, very germane that he touches uh, those areas, at least to assuage some of the pains mm. the parents are going through right now. Because, like you say in your prologue, actually, each time I'm driving, sometimes when the the issue of this um, um, gas comes to my mind, I almost had an accident. Because I, I wonder as if it's happening to my daughter. I, sometimes, before I come to myself uh, again, 
you know, it takes, uh, let me say, intervention of God. Because some, there, there was a time I was carried away on the express. Yeah. God thinking about the agony these people will be going through now in the hands of those uh, malevolent individuals. So I just, you know, it, it, it's terrifying. It, it just, it's not something you, you want to be imagining. So what will be happening to those uh, girls is something very terrible. And uh, we expect our government to do everything with it in its power to, to rescue uh, these um, uh, children alive. So um, I want to believe that with the intervention of foreign uh, um, you know, uh, troops and all that, we'll have a headway, even though I still have some reservations here and there. Maybe that may be discussed uh, as, the, as the discussion goes on. Mr. President, yesterday downplayed the importance of visiting Chibok in Paris. He, as a matter of fact, said that the girls are no longer in the schools. They have been abducted and his major, his primary responsibility as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is to get them back. Now, but uh, the opposition has already started talking and they said that Mr. President's absence in Chibok implied that northeastern Nigeria was beyond his control. How do you react to that? Well, actually, I, uh, while I'm not a politician, I will not join issues or uh, either support or, you know, you know, um, denounce any statement made by a political opponent. I want to say it's a serious mistake for Mr. President not to have visited a Chibok. And uh, we have said in several occasions that, look, our president is not really in charge. He's not in charge because um, he's not actually utilizing the power the, uh, the Constitution confers on him. Um, if, uh, if my analysis is correct, uh, President Jonathan happened to be one of the most pre uh, powerful presidents in the world, mm -hmm. even more, uh, more powerful than uh, President Obama, by virtue of what our Constitution confers on him as the uh, president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, but he's underutilizing that office. And that's why the Boko Haram elements have a kind of overwhelm the system. They overwhelm the system because our government has played this thing down long time. I remember 2009, we started drawing attention to the uh, upsurge of these uh, individuals. I did a story, in fact, uh, one of your sister stations, when they had their forum, I presented a lead paper there, you know, highlighting the, 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 um, the incursion of Boko Haram, the, you know, how they started and all that. And I did warn them that if care is not taken, if urgent attention is not uh, paid to this thing, that uh, the country will be overwhelmed in no time. Mm. So that is happening now. The other time again, I said, I think about a year ago, I, I warned that the Boko Haram are actually seeking franchise with Al Qaeda in the Maghreb. So as at that time, about two years ago, they were seeking that franchise seriously, and the the, uh, the international book uh, and the international terrorist uh, network actually gave them some conditions to fulfill. They were w working towards fulfilling that uh, condition seriously. I withdrew attention of the government to all the through my writing and appearing on television here and there that they are seeking franchise, and the moment they seek this franchise, they are able to get it. In fact. So it's not something that Nigeria can curtail anymore because it's going to go international. And that, is, that has happened. And that's what we are experiencing now. So Boko Haram, for him to go to France and be telling us that Boko Haram has gone past Nigeria, something another, we knew all this thing before now and we drew attention to it. But because government, you know, for one reason or another, maybe for political consideration, uh, which I call a, a political myopia, so did not allow the government to actually take decisive uh, action and stem this ugly tie. There was a time again the government was contemplating whether to dialogue with them or not. I said, what dialogue? How do you dialogue with a, uh, with a uh, insurgent group like this? You don't dialogue with unequals. You dialogue with two equal uh, um, um, you know, um, situations. For instance, if two countries are at loggerheads, so one is saying, okay, it's a key pro quo thing when the two equal uh, sovereignties are, are at loggerhead. But not when you are dealing with renegades, when, when you are dealing with insurgents, dealing with. But people what who decisive have, steps do you think the federal government could have taken before now, prior to this time? Before, before now, the, the, the time would have been stemmed a long time ago if they are taken to some of our advice that these people should be decisively dealt with. Let me tell you up to now, I still hold the view that. 
the government should look inward. I still hold the view that there are some moles, there are some uh, fifth colonies within the system. Apart from what he said, even before he said it, we knew. Because, um, you know, you keep wondering, as a security expert, you look at how your enemies, your foes, are taking steps ahead of you. Our people only take uh, reactive measures all the time. And these people are so proactive, the Boko Haram are so proactive, they read the government, they knew what the government was going to do at any given time, so they are ahead of our, you know, of our, of our armed forces, okay? So, a situation like that, you keep wondering, you are a sovereignty, we have the army, we have the armed forces, we have all these uh, um, 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 officers on, on the field. How come we are always reactionary? We are always reactive to situations. We are never proactive. How do you explain Nyanya being bombed twice within the space of two weeks? How do, you, how do you explain that? So it shows that these people, the Boko Haram, they read the government very well. They know what the government is likely to do at any given time. That gives the, 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 that gives us the fact that there are moles. My question and was... there are individuals the, who leak information. The decisive steps you think that the federal government should have taken, because you recall that there was a proclamation of state emergency that has been of effect for like a year now in northeastern Nigeria and several other moves by the federal government dialoguing, uh, uh, bringing them to the table to talk about what is actually happening. Uh, do you think there are other things uh, apart from that that the federal government should have done as prior far to this time? as I'm concerned there is no state of emergency. It's either you have a state of emergency or you don't have it. There is no partial state of emergency. State of emergency st simply means that we have an abnormality. It's a state of anomie, and in a state of anomie, you declare war. It's a full-scale war. It is because government has been playing the ostrich, government has refused to admit that we are in a state of war. And that's why all this thing, you don't de declare partial state of emergency. When you declare state of emergency, you, you collapse all institutions. It's an abnormal situ situation that requires abnormal solution. The moment the state of emergency is declared, you give them mandate, give them terms of reference, give them time to, um, to restore uh, normality. Then um, we, we, we come back to normal democratic situation. But when you have a, a, a president, for instance, who is not in charge, you have a president who is uh, considering 2015, you have a president, for instance, who does not want to, uh, who does want to step on toe, come on, this is what you have. And that is my opinion. Hear that too. That certain people who regard themselves as untouchable should be touched. This is a country, and nobody is greater or bigger than Nigeria. There have been individuals that have been fingered, you know, accusing fingers have been pointed at individuals. Have they been bugged? Have their phones been, been, been bugged? Have they been monitored the way they should be monitored to know the kind of communications that go on between them and uh, these other people? When individuals will come and tell us, for instance, our guests are no longer within the Nigerian border, they are so, 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 is naming specific uh, places. We should ask such a man, how do you get your information, up-to-date information, which even government agencies have not got? What's your link with these people? There are so many loopholes that the go I feel that I don't know whether the government is actually exploring this area, but you know, if the, if the government is, we would have gone past this stage. Let's get back to Mr. President's proposed visit to Chibok. Now, many uh, were of the opinion, as a matter of fact, a pressure group representative said, if as the commander in chief of the armed forces is afraid to visit Chibok because of security fears, then he's simply telling the helpless people in Northeast that he cannot protect them and that they should resign themselves to their fate. But I want us to capture what you think the impact of Mr. President's visit would have been on the people in Chibok, the parents of these abducted girls, and of course, the armed forces, the Nigerian military that um, uh, seem to have been experiencing a lot of division. You recall a protest by some members of the Nigerian military against the GOC in that particular state, and soldiers were seen shooting sporadically into the air. What impact, really, do you think Mr. President's visit would have made? His visit would have actually... Considering answered. that it's coming a month after the yeah, abduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though we consider it's too late, his visit nevertheless would have uh, been a moral booster to the, 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 the army on ground, to those people on ground that, oh, even the, the highest echelon of the, of the government is here. So it would have actually boosted their moral that, oh, the commander-in-chief is here. It would have boosted their moral so much. 
and they would have, that, that will have a great impact on their you know enthusiasm and uh, earnestness to actually continue the war then the, the parents also would have had a, a sense of belonging that look we have a president who empathizes with us they would have been very happy even though they are still bearing the pain but at the, at the same time they will know that the country cares about them so as it is now with him not having been able to go there for whatever reason to me some of these excuses are lame because he should have even i think a day after a president that cares if you want to borrow a leave from what is happening in all that climb look at america when uh, the unfortunate this thing happened in new jersey he was there the, the day after and so and so forth so he was there to sympathize with them and to tell them that we are in charge we are taking measures to make sure that this thing doesn't happen not only that it doesn't happen again but to assuage the, the, the suffering you are going through now, relief measures here and there are being joined out and all that. That is how a president does. And the people that is governing will have a sense of belonging and their loyalty towards the government again will be rekindled. But here, maybe because we are used to all this mishap, all this, uh, uh, you know, killing, death almost every day, we don't value lives again. And, uh, and that's very, very bad. And it's because of government carelessness that has led to all these things. But because really, really, consideration if, and so many other things. if there were genuine fears as regards the security of Mr. President, don't you think that was more important than a visit to Chibok at that time? Genuine fear of the life of the president? I, 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 okay, if you say there are genuine fears about the life of the president, it shows that the Boko Haram are in control. We are talking about part of the country that the chief, um, the commander-in-chief of a country is visiting a part of his country, and they are genuine fears. So what, what do you call a country with, with sovereignty? A country that has army, that has armed forces, the three arms, and the navy, uh, air force, and the army, that has police, SSS, and all these other, you know, um, agencies. So that would have gone to this area to comb, or we call it sweep. That we have gone to this area to sweep, okay, to make sure that the visit of the president is uh, hitch free. So, when we have all this, and yet somebody is exercising fear that some renegades are going to kill the president, it's an insult on the common sense of, of, of anybody. In fact, it's an insult, it's a denigration of our, of, our, of our sovereignty, it's a denigration of the fact that we are ruling ourselves and we have the power to continue to rule ourselves. If we are afraid of just a handful of individuals, irrespective of the kind of uh, uh, ammunition they are holding, more powerful than Nigeria, it shows that these people are more powerful than the state of Nigeria. You are a security expert. One of the reasons possibly that led to you know, the cancellation of Mr. President's visit was the fact that his visit became a public knowledge. You know, we should have kept, should possibly should have been kept secret from the public. <laughs> I still don't believe that. Because if you know the power the president wields, the fact that the, 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 the whole arm of the armed forces of the country is behind a president that is visiting a place, I do not see, uh, except if we are attributing some, I mean, what, it's like what we are attributing to the Boko Haram now is more than uh, the Boko Haram. So we, are, we are assuming that they are larger than life. I, that shouldn't be. It shouldn't be at all. I still believe if the president has what I call political will, we will not get to where we are now. If the president has the political will to deal decisively with these people, we will not get here. It's not as if our army is not powerful enough. No, forget about what is happening now, the fact that we have to now be calling the international community to come and help us. The army that Nigeria has as of today, I want to bet anything with it that if it is the same army that I know, we'll be able to, 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 to decimate the Boko Haram, what they have. But if there is no pol political way, if there is uh, one statement that is being counteracted by body language, of course, we know what is happening. So, and exactly, that is why we don't have effect, you know, on uh, what the army is doing. I still don't believe that the, uh, the, the life of the president would have been in jeopardy if he had gone there. Not at all. At a press briefing in Paris yesterday, uh, Mr. President dismissed criticism that the Nigerian response to that particular abduction had been slow. And let me read an excerpt of what he said. He said, terror only started in 2009 in Nigeria, and we didn't have the architecture to deal with that. As we progress, 
you will see that the Nigerian military will cope. Now, there's a lot of um, reactions to that. Many are of the opinion that could the first and experience of terror in Nigeria, so to speak, be an excuse for failure in leadership? And as a pointer to 2015, are we, is Mr. President say, saying uh, indirectly that we should be looking for someone who has some experience in the military who can lead Nigeria light in the fight against terror? Thank you. After 2001 in America, between that 2001 and now, how many major attacks on American soil have we witnessed? Shortly after 2001, America went to the drone, drone board. That, it was after 2001 they formed uh, Homeland Security. Look at the duty, the function of Homeland Security now in tracking the enemies, in tracking any undesirable e individual. There have been so many attempts at uh, America, but America has been able to ward off this thing because of their proactiveness after 2001. For somebody to say terror started only 2009 and all this thing, and we have two major attacks on a particular spot in two weeks, is inexcusable. So nobody will take that excuse from anybody because it is true, even that terror attack that happened in 2001 in America, they were ill prepared for it. Okay? We call it a failure of imagination. America never imagined that such a thing would happen on their soil. It's not as if they, did, they didn't have the will with that to actually check me, but they never imagined it. Nigeria also never imagined that this would happen. It happened. Since it had happened in Nigeria in 2009, and it's been happening with a kind of um, um, a regularity that one cannot even fathom, and almost every week. And it now seems as if uh, the commander-in-chief will now be uh, writing a um, condolent message, uh, message in, uh, in advance because he knows that every week this will happen. It's unfortunate. No, there are certain things that are just not excusable at all. Since 2009 to date, almost six years. So what's stopping us from actually getting our ass together with a view to making sure that we, we, we decimate this? You see, initially they were denying. There was serious denial. Uh, Boko Haram is faceless. We don't even know who to talk to. Whereas there are face, there are there there are spokespeople people who have been talking. We have faces to these things. The government lived in denial for almost three years. Before now, before it, it now it, 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 it has now festered, so that we are now calling the international community. The government lived in denial for so many years. Now, even as I speak now, it's not as if the government does not know who and who are actually lending some voices to them and all that. What is stopping the government from actually fishing some individuals out and make them, you know, guinea pigs? It's all right. Uh, but there's been a lot of foreign support uh, springing across the world from the U.S. to China, France, and even yesterday, Mr. President was in Paris, having been summoned by Francois Hollande alongside President of Chad, Niger, Benin Republic, and Cameroon. And uh, many are of the opinion, as a matter of fact, the foreigners are saying that not much can be done in Nigeria if Nigeria doesn't take the first step, doesn't take its responsibility more seriously. How much do you think the federal government needs to work with governors in northeastern Nigeria? As we speak today, there hasn't been a summit, a security summit between the presidency and governors in the northeastern Nigeria. What's the implication of these, uh, you know, on all of these foreign efforts? Thank you very much. Uh, the same thing uh, I, I said in another interview that look, we are all happy, jubilating that foreign troops are here with us. They can do little or nothing without certain things being put in place in Nigeria. Okay. We need to look inward. We, it's true, we have to show leadership. But I have some fear. The fear stems from the fact that the military, that hitherto has been able to do almost nothing, okay, is turning this tide, is stopping the insurgents, okay, even though. Boko Haram has a peculiar and unique signature, okay? They will always let you know they are coming. You get it? Yeah. So that makes anybody who is talking to be inexcusable. When Boko Haram tells you he's coming, I, they come. How? Because an ordinary response uh, uh, period in America and other developed countries is between five and ten minutes. Response. So when Boko Haram tells you he's coming, and he comes, and they all pray for two hours, no molestation from anybody, no intercession from anybody, 
they will cut our they cut our gas with um, how many lorry loads okay they traverse our country to wherever they are going to nobody intercepted them and these are states that are supposed to be under state of emergency what do you call state of emergency is a rule of soldiers where you have soldiers almost everywhere checking what is going on what is going on. where did these people pass did they pass this space or did they disappear before they left uh, nigeria borders you begin to ask yourself a question who are the soldiers who are on ground to check this thing how can they even see this is not the first time no so you begin to wonder uh, yaya was born the only reaction our people could do was to mount roadblock and the, this um, um, Boko Haram, they, 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 they saw a loophole in the roadblock. They, that they now went to the roadblock again to detonate and all of these things. So, they, they, so, they, so we are talking about intelligence here. Please let me hold you there for a while. Um, we're going to continue this discussion shortly after the news update coming up shortly. Don't forget that while the security summit was going on in Paris, Boko Haram also was um, successful in its operation in the border town between Nigeria and Cameroon. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. I don't think they're the same the What are the people saying? Uh, five local government out of the Tajiri local government is more than many states in the north. The economy is booming. Where is the economy booming? Bomb blast in Abuja. Don't you have security? Why are we fighting? President should not just sit in Abuja or in Asokoro or wherever he lives. They're not supposed to look around. They know them. Men cannot be there and be there at the same time. The life of the citizens, community need to be protected. It's can't work out. Bring the message of peace. Let there be proper devolution of power from the center. The center is too powerful. The people only on Core TV News.